Hello and welcome back to some more Football Manager 2021 and a part one of the the new phase of this save. We're in season nine of what would have been the Sir Alex Ferguson challenge. We finished that now and I'm going to call this new series The Journeyman of a Legend. So here we go. Uh, we are taking on Arsenal in the UEFA Super Cup today and then we are taking on uh wolverhampton wanderers in the league uh i can't wait to catch you up with all of the transfers but if you are new around here make sure you do click that subscribe button for daily fm content from a monday to a friday and i can't wait to to talk you through the history of the series so um so far it, it, it has gone very very well indeed if we have a little look um, at the seasons this is always a, a good one um, to look at so uh, when we came in Aston Villa of course they were in 19th place on the 6th of November that's when we took over the club for the Sir Alex Ferguson challenge straight away we won the FA Cup which was an awesome achievement we then went the next season and won uh, the Community Shield and the FA Cup again and we've successfully defended it not really a, an amazing couple of seasons in the league there but we did keep Villa up despite not winning any of our first 10 games. And then we ended up finishing in 11th. Moving on to Season 3, we went and won uh, the, the Carabao Cup and the Community Shield again and finished 7th, qualifying for the Euro Europa Conference League, which was awesome, um, which we actually went on and won. Uh, and we did win Manager of the Month once in that season as well. Uh, finishing third in a dramatic end of the season match against Liverpool and then it all started going wrong <laughs> Ollie Watkins stopped scoring uh, the old guys that I was signing weren't very good anymore and uh, it was a disaster we nearly got relegated in what was the low point of this series in the 2024-25 se season uh, finishing 13th in the league in the end uh, we then went on to the next season where we threw away the last two matches deliberately so that we didn't qualify for the Europa Conference League and I think that was the turning point we signed a lot of young players for for the team that year and uh, we bedded them in and then went for a big title push the next season. We won Manager of the Year, Manager of the Month two times, and of course we won the Premier League and the FA Cup. It was an awesome season, uh, and you know we dominated the Premier League. We were fantastic uh, that season. And then last year we somehow managed to defend our Premier League trophy. We won the FA Cup and Champions League in the most dramatic fashion possible go and watch uh, the finale of the sir alex ferguson challenge which was the last video it was it was incredible uh, the last two matches there uh and then we won manager of the year and manager of the month as well and we've already won the community shield this season a little bit more on that in a moment but uh yeah the 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 journeyman of a legend i, I wanted to, to do a journeyman type save after the sir alex ferguson challenge and i thought something quite unique for me as somebody who's done quite a few journeymans in the past on the channel something unique for me was was starting this journeyman challenge at um a, a, a distant point in the future you know we've had a wonderful time at aston villa and and i still plan on staying at aston villa certainly for this season to try and win the the fifa club world cup the uefa super cup and you know all that good stuff um that's why i want to stay at villa for one more year they're also moving into their new stadium next year as well, so potentially we'll stay for a little bit longer. But um, I wanted to to do something a little bit different. I'm definitely looking for the jobs, you know, for the end of the season and, and try and replicate this magic all over the world. And, and, you know, I think it'll be a really fun save to get behind. So hopefully you guys um, are looking forward to that as well. As you can see, I have been appointed England manager um jose Mourinho left uh england after the 2028 euros uh where they got to the final and lost to italy but uh, they have won the world cup in this save they won it uh, back in 2022 um and they won the euros in 2024 so they are a a very good side where we're inheriting the world number one um side in england so you know that's that's what we're we're going to try and do over the next four years a little project to try and win a world cup and a euros and and you know really help our hall of fame um 
ambitions. So, yeah, that's just going to be a, a side sort of story to this this whole series. Um, but you can see uh, we've, we've started the season. I do want to talk to you about the transfers because it has been an amazing summer. So, um, first of all, I will talk you through the outgoing players. Um, so, uh, Mulder's gone out on loan again. It's amazing, isn't it? Mulder has, has been on loan for pretty much every season we've had him. Uh, it does, you know, he's actually not been at the club um, that long. Uh, but but he, he just seems like a guy I keep sending out on loan. Uh, I sent out Villela uh, on loan in January. He's, he's still out until uh, the uh, January transfer window. Uh, the first signing that we brought in of the summer was this guy, Jan Cavalcanti from Brazil. Uh, he was a, a 14.25 million signing from Santos, uh, who, <laughs> you know, had a very good time with Jan Cavalcanti and, and he was actually a, a four star player, uh, on the scout report. He's not quite that good, but he does have some excellent attributes. Uh, 17 dribbling, 18 finishing, 16 first touch. He's pacey. I think this guy, once he's uh, used to the Premier League, will will actually be a very, very good sign. And, uh, he's just been playing at the Olympics and did really, really well. Uh, so moving in there. Uh, since July, this is what's happened on the on the transfer. So Borgard went on a free, uh, Chucky went on a free as well. Mo Salah went out. Danny Hansen, uh, Jorge Salas, uh, the first wonder kid we signed. He never really fit into the the squad, and he's gone to RB Leipzig for twenty seven million, a nice nine million profit on him. Uh, never really uh, hit the hit hit his potential, and I, I hope that at Leipzig he can forge himself a good career lots of players gone out on loan and, and some devastating ones for me to say goodbye to Paul Glatzel has gone to Olympiakos for 12.75 million um you know I, I tried my best to recreate the magic of FM18 with Paul Glatzel but it just didn't happen in the end uh Ricky J Jones has gone as well he's you know, gone for 14 million or whatever, could rise to 21 and a half. I think he'll have a really good career at uh, Young Boys now in Switzerland. He's he's had a decent couple of seasons for us since joining for six million pounds uh, in 2025. So all the best to him. And Marcus Antonio has gone for 25 million pounds, probably a little bit undersold, but uh, he wanted to leave. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't play too much last season. And when he did play, didn't play it wonderfully um so i think definitely a, a decent uh amount of money to get for him and, and we can invest that in the squad that was a mistake i didn't mean to do that um on the incomings we've had quite a few a few really good signings a couple of bossmans that we've brought in gabriel gutierrez has come in from uh osasuna and he is a 20 year old wonder kid defender excellent attributes and i think uh, a couple of loan spells and he could do really well. He can play left back, he can play defender uh, or defensive midfielder. Could potentially be a five-star player in the future. Uh, already playing at a decent Premier League level and, and you know, could come in and, and provide some cover if needed. Uh, and then Nicholas Sewell from um, Bayern Munich. We've brought him in on a free transfer. As our fourth defender, uh, Christensen went on a free transfer. He was released at the end of his contract. He's come in a three-star player and, uh, you know, still got some excellent attributes, particularly his heading <laughs> attribute, his tackling marking, very good. He's still got 16 pace, uh, good jump and reach. You know, that this these are really good qualities that I like to see in a defender and I think he'll, he'll fit in really, really well. Uh, we also signed Dovin Moscara. On a free transfer, but with a three million um, compensation clause in there for Chelsea because he is uh, or was under twenty three. He has uh, some excellent attributes. Again, coming in as a backup goalkeeper, Diogo Costa is our number one, uh, and Duvan Moscara uh, will potentially, uh, you know, take over that pot spot in the in in the future. We've also got Carlos Vinic Vinicius um, at the club, but he, you know he's done all right. He he actually had a full season playing for Chelsea a few years ago. Uh, and got 14 clean sheets in 38 and only conceded 48. So, you know, it's not much more than a, a goal a game, which isn't terrible. 
Um, obviously, we'd rather he didn't concede a goal again, but then went out on loan uh, to Brighton and had an okay season in the Championship. Um, had a loan spell at Real Madrid. And, you know, mainly over the last couple of seasons, he hasn't played and, and wanted to leave Chelsea and we gave him the route out. And, you know, he's got four-star uh, potentially. He looks excellent on paper um, and, and has actually had to play a, a few games at the start of the season because of the Olympics. Uh, Sebastian Fuentes has come in from Colo Colo. 18-year-old Chilean international. Uh, another wonder kid. Really, really uh, strong-looking player, this guy. And uh, I think he will be the long-term replacement for Thomas Estevez, who is still only something like 26 himself. So plenty of years in the future I'm looking ahead with this one. Uh, but Colo Colo uh, in Chile, uh, you know, he's done all right for them so far. But you can see uh, on the scout reports, two-and-a-half-star ability, five-star potential um, and yeah, looking forward to, to utilising him. Only 3.1 million. Uh, Harry Nicholson has come in on a free transfer. Look at this ginger ninja, <laughs> 20 years old. He's an English um, defensive midfielder. Uh, can play a normal midfield as well. He's just going to be an under 23s player for now. Um, has got three star potential, so definitely a profit uh, signing. And maybe your eyes were drawn towards this signing on a free transfer. Now it cost an arm and a leg to sign him, but I truly believe that this this guy could turn us from uh, a league and 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 Champions League winning team to uh, a dominating for for years to come. Now he is 29. He is going to turn 30 in December, but remember Neymar you know, he was still at the top of his game at 35, and I think Kylian Mbappe is better. And the reason why is look at these average ratings. He has not averaged under 7.71 at all in this save, and he hasn't uh, averaged below an 8 since 2024. Like, that is ridiculous. And look at this. Look at this. You know, the amount of goals he's scored, the amount he's assisting, player of the matches, 17 he had last season for Paris Saint-Germain. He was released on a free transfer. I threw the kitchen sink at signing uh, Kylian Mbappe, and I think he will be a difference maker this year. Him and John Reyes up top will be ridiculous. Uh, we also signed Kane Daly uh, from... I can't remember who this was from. Sheffield United on a free transfer. Uh, I think he could be a decent player in the future. Two and a half star potential. Free transfer at the end of the day. I was particularly impressed with his um, physical and mental attributes. His, his technicals are a little bit iffy, but um, hey, profit player if needs be. Uh, this was the big one. Obviously, we've had a big signing in each of the last two summer transfer windows. We had John Reyes two years ago for 80 million, and last year we had um, Jamie Jordan for 90 million. Uh, and this year it's going to be S Sumaila uh, Diallo, uh, and he's come from Real Sociedad for 90 million pounds. Uh, he's a 19 year old Spanish. Wonder Kid, again, three and a half star current ability, five star potential. And you might say, Joe, you've probably overspent on this guy. But, uh, you know, I think his, his attributes are very, very promising, he's, particularly his physicals and mentals. And have a little look at how he's been doing. OK, so he was a Real Madrid youth player. He did really well for the second team there. Never really got a chance for Real Madrid's first team, although he did play in the Cup and got an average of eight. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, then he went to Real Sociedad for £7.25 million and has had two brilliant seasons um, for that club, considering he was 17 and 18 respectively there. Uh, and now he's 19 years old. He's going to turn 20 this year. This guy, I think, is only going to get better. And I think we've got an incredible front four now um, of Diallo, Mbappe, Reyes and Jamie Jordan. I think that's going to be unstoppable going forward. And we've also signed Ollie Morton from uh, the CU Academy. Again, just an under-23s uh, beef out player. And, you know, we'll see how that one goes. Again, potentially a profit player.
Uh, so looking at pre-season, you can see how well we uh, did in the friendlies. Uh, I, I was very, very impressed. Actually took charge of some of them for once um, and um, was blown away by how good we were playing. We then beat uh, Man United 1-0 in the, the Community Shield um, match. Juan Hernandez getting a 92nd minute goal there. And then we beat Bournemouth on the opening day of the Premier League season. Declan Rice, Juan Hernandez and Jamie Jordan on the score sheet. So today we're taking on Arsenal in the UEFA Super Cup. Let's see what team we are going for today then. So... Uh, Diogo Costa will start in goal with Estevez, Norman Williamson, Kumbulla and Gaia and in defence. We've then got Rice and Henri in the middle of the park with Diallo and Jordan starting wide of Hernandez and Reyes up top. Uh, Kylian Mbappe has just come back from the Olympics so does need a rest. So, uh, you know, I don't want to risk him in today's final if we don't need to. Um, we'll make him the number 22. Why not? And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how this team works. I'm looking forward to seeing Diallo um, in his debut because, again, he's been at the Olympics. So I haven't actually seen many of our new guys yet. Uh, in fact, the only player I have seen is, is Muscara. So you can see most of it is an evolution of the team that we had last year. But, hey, the team last year won the treble. I don't think we needed to overhaul it. We just got rid of some of the deadwood um, and people who didn't want to be here. And we've, you know, improved ourselves. I think he has Madison. Now Rodrigo. Rodrigo on the ball. Gets it in. Oh, it's a 1-0 already to Arsenal. That is a bit of a disaster. Um, yeah, that was a, a strange little exchange. Rodrigo and then Madison, our former player, of course. Got it in there and a yeah, free header for Militiao. And uh, it's a good, good goal in the end. Costa couldn't get to it. Uh, Declan Rice should be able to play through that, apparently. He is uh, the England captain as well. So we've got uh, club and international captain there in Declan Rice. And here he is now on the ball. Gets it to Gare now. Gare on the ball. Gets it to Diallo. And now John Reyes scores his first goal of the season. And Diallo already with his first assist in an Aston Villa shirt. Uh, and that was a nice little move there. And all started with a nice little pass from Reyes. And then Gare uh, swings it across to Diallo. First touch. And that was just beautiful from John Reyes. As always, he is going to be um, a, a top, top player this season. And probably going for his third golden boot in four years. The only reason he didn't win it last year was because he was injured for a little bit. He is a, a ridiculous, ridiculously good player. Rodrigo on the ball. Henri now chasing him. Milichau. Oh, and Gea cuts it out. Here's Reyes. Reyes on the ball. Ball to Rice now. Diallo. Diallo gets it to Henri. Henri. What's he going to do with it? Gets it to Diallo. Back to Henri. Great ball and Reyes. Well, for once, doesn't stick it into the back of the net. But a great save from the goalkeeper there. Gea in the middle. Reyes heads it, but uh, it's off the line by... Lissandro Martinez. Here's Gare to Jordan. Now to Cucho. Cucho on the ball. Nope. It's Henry. Oh, what a goal that is by Haiti Henry. And that is a terrific finish. And uh, he has become the ultimate goal scorer and mid midfielder. He really has. Over the last uh, season and a half. He has just been brilliant. Look at that. What a finish. And that's why I don't feel like I need to improve areas of the squad. I feel like we've already got what we want. And we're 2-1 up against Arsenal at half-time, who must have won the Europa League, of course. So they'll be in the Champions League this year. Um, good to see. Good to see. Cucho not having the best of games. I think we will bring Mbappe on at some point. We, we need to have a little look at him. He has um, Montiel on the ball. Oof. It was a decent run, but a terrible finish from him there. Jose Montiel. Look at that tash. And here's Gaia into the box. Roman Williamson over the bar. And yeah, uh, Jose, I call him Gaia sometimes. I, 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 we'll go with Gaia. Um, Jose Gaia has, uh, has, has come in as our first choice left back. 
this year because I've uh, noticed Andy Robertson is now only apparently a two-star player. And we did notice a little drop off of of his form in the second half of the season, but you know I think what worked so well last year was the fact that we had great rotation for the for those uh, for those spots and uh, you know particularly left back, and I think that's what we'll continue with again. I don't want to go out there and buy one un unless they're going to be better than Gear or, or Robertson, and I, I haven't found anyone. That's better than them, um, you know, for a reasonable price this summer. So that's why I haven't went out and recruited. But here's Cucho, and that should have been 3-1. So let's uh, have a little look at what we can do here. So we're 60 minutes in. Um, Declan Rice is pretty, pretty tired. So we'll bring in Aaron Ramsey, who, um, of course, is an Aston Villa youth product in real life. Um, He's been out on loan pretty much every every year of, of this save so far. Um, and, and I, you know, I think he deserves his chance now. He had a cracking season at Montpellier last year. So let's give him a chance in the first team. And, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, Jamie Jordan, not looking like he's having the best of times. So why don't we go and get Moise Keane on the pitch? And see how... Moise Keane is getting on this season. Of course, had an excellent second half of the year last year. And was one of the key players and key reasons why we won the title. You know, we had some excellent, consistent form towards the end of the year. And that's exactly why we why we won it. Estevez to Norman Williamson. Estevez on the ball again. Great to have him back. He was injured, of course, the last few games. Diallo gets it forward. What a ball. And John Reyes makes it 3-1. And hopefully gets our two hands on the trophy there. And a lovely through ball there from um, Diallo. And uh, that's a great start for him. You have to say, a wonderful vision to get that ball forward. And John Reyes there to tap it in. And... Um, I think with about 15 minutes to go, why don't we bring on the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Kylian Mbappe. And see how he gets on. Oh, well, good save. Who's this? Why is Cucho walking around the outside of the pitch? Here's Reyes now. Diallo gets it forward. Moise Keane's there. And oh, Moise Keane scores. And it's 4-1 now. And that is another terrific ball from Diallo. And that is amazing from that deep to be able to have that vision <laughs> we uh, have possibly broken fm with this front four this year all we now need to see is Kylian mbappe do something ridiculously good in these last five minutes my only slight worry is can he do it in english football he has diallo on the ball can he do it on a cold night in stoke is the saying estevez Diallo, Mbappé, Ramsey, well, <laughs> I can't believe Mbappé didn't score that, but Arsenal looked to have every man on the line there, but absolutely terrific, and I wonder if Mbappé is good at free kicks, because that's something we did miss from Neymar last season, what a run that was by the way, here's Diallo, Reyes, nearly got his hat-trick in the UEFA Super Cup there, he has Ramsey now keen to Mbappe again, who's just picked it up and ran with it. And whoa, Diallo's done a little, a little naughty there. But I think he'll get away with it. That's a great ball over the top here. Stevenson into the middle. Estevez away. Now Diallo boots it forward. Here's John Reyes. This is a great chance to get Mbappe his first goal. Well, it's a good tackle. It's going to be a corner now. And it's Gare. That takes it into the middle, it goes. Gear again into the middle. Oh, it's away by Saliba. And now Ferran to Madison. And that is full time. And again, we get our hands on another trophy. The UEFA Super Cup is Aston Villas. Well, Henri is going to be the man that's, uh, that's given the trophy. And there you go. He hands it over. Well, we hand it over. <laughs> And Henri lifts a UEFA Super Cup. And what a wonderful 
performance it was today. We went 1-0 down, but we came back with a vengeance and won 4 one Absolutely brilliant. Are we going to see it? Yeah, the goalkeeper cartwheel that we always love to see. And uh, the players looking very, very happy with that performance. And 9.2 on his debut for Diallo, 8.2 from Reyes. Kylian Mbappé, a 6.7. That's possibly going to be his worst performance of the season going on what he's done um, for Paris Saint-Germain over the years. But there you go. Liverpool have made a, uh, a Christian Pulisic offer, which I'll deal with in a second. Um, I am looking to sell Pulisic, by the way. 29 years old. He didn't actually play too much last season, was fairly plagued by injury. So if I can get a decent amount of money for him, I think I'll, I'll take it and try and reinvest it in a in a younger player. Um, we're going to put our arm around him. Absolutely superb. Um, for Sumaila Diallo. Absolutely brilliant. Let's see how we get on against Wolverhampton Wanderers then. Well, here we go for the Wolves match. Just before we get into it, I do want to introduce you to one of our new signings. Pulisic uh, has gone to Liverpool for £54 million. I was pretty happy with that. And we have signed a young English midfielder, 25-year-old Giovanni Reina. 18 caps for England, one goal, um, and can play anywhere across uh, the, the midfield six, really. Um, he'll be primarily in the midfield. £90 million pound we've spent on this guy, but he's had some fantastic seasons in uh, La Liga and did all right at, at Dortmund and Bayern Munich as well. So I think this is a, a good sign, and he's come in, uh, and he's going to sit alongside Declan uh, Rice or or Hedy Henry. Uh, you know, I think that's that's some some very very good um, players that that we've we've got in there. Um, I'm very very happy with with getting Giovanni Reina in, and I do think that will be the end of our transfer business. We've spent quite a lot of money, money two ninety million signings. Um, you know, for a treble win inside, is is quite a lot, and you know we still haven't really changed much of the DNA of the the squad, and 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 that's what I think is is really key. Um, you know, we're keeping the bulk of the squad together, and we're 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 just picking little improvements to go for. So just a few changes for this match. Then we've brought in Kylian Mbappe up top as a complete forward i'm trying him as a complete forward who knows how he'll get on a giovanni reina comes in for his debut in the midfield as well and i just realized i didn't tell you why it was called legend uh or journeyman of a legend sorry and that is because we are now a legend at uh at aston villa after all of our years here um so you know we're going out at a legend we're starting this New journey after the Sir Alex Ferguson challenge as a legend already at the club. So it's the, the journeyman of a legend. That's why it's called that. But anyway, let's get into the match against um, Wolves. It should be a match that we win, uh, you know, quite comfortably, if, if I'm being honest. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. You know, we're still gelling certain players into the squad. And we'll see how we get on. So here we go. Uh, we'll pump the fists. We'll say we are the favourites for a reason. Let's go out there and win this match. And uh, oh, that squad looks disgusting, doesn't it? It really does. Wow. Um, obviously, Wolves are, are a decent side, but I would fancy our chances today in front of Villa Park, embarking on its final season as our stadium. As long as everything goes to plan with the, the George Ramsey Stadium. He has Jose Gare on the ball. He gets it in. It's Thomas Estevez who's going to shoot. Oh, great goal from the right back there. That was a brilliant finish. And straight away we're 1-0 up within the first five minutes of this match. And that was a, a nice little move. And Jose Gare getting the ball across. Thomas Estevez picking it up outside the area. He runs in and shoots and the goalkeeper probably should do better, but I'm not bothered. It's 1-0, and that's all we really care about is the three points today. And I, I'm I'm hoping, you know, that we see a, a great performance from, from Kylian Mbappe. Um, it would be wonderful on his home debut, his Premier League debut, of course, if he has a, a good game today. Here's Gare, gets it forward. John Reyes is there. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. 
It was quite the quite a cheeky chip he tried there, but didn't quite pay off. It would have been an absolutely stupendous goal had it went in. But it wasn't meant to be, and wow, John Ray is injured. Oh dear. Well, we weren't expecting that, were we? <laughs> we were not expecting that, right. Do we bring Yan on? What can Yan do? Mm, nah, we'll bring on we'll bring on Kucho. Yeah, Kucho will will do the job, surely. Mmm. Well that's not, not not what we we were hoping for. Um Yeah, that's a that's a, a tough one to take that. Diallo looking pretty tired as well. So don't get complacent out there. Um, yeah, Diallo can come off. We'll stick Oscar Garcia on, who uh, broke his spine last season, and uh, that's why he didn't play much part in our treble winning season, but came back in for the last few games and looked pretty decent, actually. So uh, he's come back into the, the starting squad at the start of this season, and hopefully he'll do a good job. Here's Estevez on the ball. Can he get it in? He's still going. Nope. Well, that was that was very strange, but Norman Williamson gets it back. Here's Garcia. Estevez again. He's going to have another go at this. Gets it to Reyna and Mbappe. Cucho. Reyna, what a goal that is from Giovanni Reyna on his debut. An absolutely brilliant goal on his debut. What a shot that was. That was fantastic. Estevez just seemed to get confused. Just sprayed it to Reyna, who got Mbappe to Cucho. And then, wow, what a finish that is. From Giovanni Reyna in the 55th minute of the game. And it's 2-0. And that's what 90 million gets you. Here's Jordan. Jamie Jordan on the ball. Another 90 million player. Garcia. Now Estevez. Reyna. He's not going to shoot from there, surely. <laughs> Jordan to Cucho. Mbappe. Oh, and that's what he can do. That was a fabulous finish from Kylian Mbappe. And... It's just a shame we're not getting to see the, the awesome foursome today because Diallo, a little bit tired, obviously. John Reyes going off injured, and I really hope it's not a, a bad injury for John. That was a terrific finish from Kylian Mbappé. And now we're 3-0 up. Here's uh, Hoover on the ball on the right-hand side. What's he going to do with it? Well, nothing. <laughs> nothing of note. We do have one more substitution that we can make, and I think Henry's going to come off and we'll stick um, Carmelo Gina in there instead. Not Henry, Henri. Garcia on the ball. What's he going to do with it? Well, that's outside the area, surely. I wouldn't have thought that was a penalty. It looked definitely outside of the area. So, we shall see. Yeah, no penalty was outside of the box, which is fine. So, let's see who takes the free kick. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Gare. No, nothing of note. It was just the penalty appeal that was in the highlight. So, 10 minutes to go, and it's it's been a comfortable performance so far. I'd love to see another goal. I'd definitely love to see us keep a clean sheet. Here's Hoover on the ball. Good tackle from Gare. And that time it's blocked. Here's Joel Ward on the ball. And uh, Garcia gets it. Mbappe now picks it up and runs. What a run this is. Mbappe is still going. It's Cucho. And Jordan. How has that not gone in? Jordan loses it. How has that not gone in? And he runs it out of play. That was crazy. What a save that was from Ainsley Pierce there. Wow, not Joel Ward, sorry, John Ward for um, Wolves, one of the, the wonder kids in this game. But uh, there you go, full time and a 3-0 victory and a very, very sweet one as well. We looked very strong there and now let's see what the damage is. What is the damage? Oh, a twisted ankle, he's out for four to six weeks, That's mm, that's a tough one.
But um, at the very least, you know, he's he's only going to be out till the start of September, which isn't too bad, is it? And uh, he'll miss the he'll miss our England debut, um, which is a shame. Very impressed with the chances. I mean, Gaia again, two man of the match performances in in his uh, first two matches. <laughs> you know, that's that's insane. That is insane. And uh, I'm pretty sure in the, the was he in the European Super Cup? No. No, he wasn't. But uh, Jose Gea, what I mean, what a player! What a, what a squad we have got this year. I mean, look at that. That is very very nice looking squad. Um, you know, don't bother paying attention about these star ratings. I think any of these could come in and do a fantastic job for for the team. And um, you know, I think that's what we're seeing. So when are we going to come back? Uh, I think we'll come back for our England debut. Which will be on the 2nd of September against Denmark. Uh, and we'll play Switzerland as well. We might as well, I think, you know, come back for our for our England portion. Um, and then uh, we'll see how we're getting on with Aston Villa in the league and stuff. And yeah, it's 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 going to be a really cool season. And I can't wait to, to get deep into this series, you know, into our 6th, 7th club. And who knows what year we'll be in. Who knows what country we'll be in. Who knows whether Kylian Mbappe will still be our star striker. Um, you know, I'm just really looking forward to it. And hopefully you guys are too. If you've enjoyed this first episode, give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe for daily FM content from a Monday to a Friday. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.